her family, our school family here. Would you guys please stand? Okay, and uh, the next item on our agenda tonight are recognition. So, Dr. Parker, would you please join me at the board? We have points. Yes. begin our record. in observance and in remembrance of the lives lost during the Virginia University of Virginia tragedy. Thank you. We stand with the families and the University of Virginia community. This evening, we have joining us uh, 20 or 23 um, apprentice program graduates. Newport News Public Schools apprenticeship program is a structured professional development and state certification program that combines hands-on training and practical classroom learning. The program is designed to develop highly skilled employees. During the two-year process, apprentices gain a deeper understanding of school and division operations and how their work fits into the school division strategic plan and supports our students. The program is the only one in Virginia administered by a school division through the Virginia Department of Labor and Industries Apprenticeship Office. The customized courses enhance the apprentice's skills and talents. The school division has programs in four occupational areas, child nutrition, custodial services, transportation, and clerical support. Tonight, we're recognizing our most recent graduates, our newly designated clerical specialists. These dedicated employees successfully completed a rigorous sequence of program requirements to earn a Commonwealth of Virginia Certificate of Completion of Apprenticeship. The certificate reads, the name of the individual, has satisfactorily completed a time-based registered apprenticeship of 4,000 hours at the occupation of clerical specialist in accordance with the standards approved by the Virginia Apprenticeship Council and is by virtue of the statutes of the Commonwealth, awarded this certificate, and it is signed by the Secretary of the Virginia Apprenticeship Council. Please join me in congratulating our newly designated clerical specialists. Those with an honors designation finished with a 3.0 grade point average. So please join us in congratulating Sparkle Austin, clerical specialist with honors. <laughs> Carla Ash, clerical specialist with honors. <laughs> Michelle Buckley, clerical specialist. Our next honoree was unable to join us this evening, but we'd like to acknowledge LaSonia Campbell, clerical specialist. <laughs> Our next honoree is Kimberly Sindra Cassio P. Cassio P. Myra Hernandez, clerical specialist with honors. We'd also like to congratulate Kelly Ingram, clerical specialist with honors. She's unable to join us. And 
Benita Williams, clerical specialist. Johnson. I'm yeah. sorry. Benita Johnson. My apologies. Benita Johnson, clerical specialist. I'm sorry, Ms. Johnson. I'm giving you a new name. Oh, she said she didn't get married, so disclose. <laughs> Kathy King, clerical specialist with honors. Sandy Lassiter, clerical specialist. Crystal Marble, clerical specialist. <laughs> Chantel McCauley, clerical specialist. <laughs> Christy McClary, clerical specialist. Vera Mosley, clerical specialist with honors. Bonnie Shields, clerical specialist with honors. Joanne Spruill, clerical specialist. <laughs> Tamara Taylor, clerical specialist. <laughs> Wilma Thomas, clerical specialist. <laughs> Valeria Torres Miranda, clerical specialist. Luana Torres, clerical specialist with honors. <laughs> Natalie Ward, clerical specialist. <laughs> and rounding out the class of 22 proud, Kelly Williams, clerical <laughs> specialist. <laughs> Give them one more round of applause for two years of hard work. And then I'll just okay. step out. Get in the window. Get in the window. Yep, get in the window. 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 Get in Stop,
while they're taking their seats, I just wanted to share, because Dr. Parker said two years, right? Yes, two years. Wow. During a pandemic. Okay. Mm -hmm. wow, See, I have a little amen corner going. Um, <laughs> these clerical specialists completed coursework and on-the-job training in customer service, effective communications, English, math, Spanish, workplace technology, and leadership skills. And they also sharpened their skills in crisis training, public speaking, office management, and event planning. A lot to learn. So again, mm -hmm. congratulations to all of our clerical specialists. I also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge their supporters, their family, friends, and colleagues joining them tonight. Will all of you please stand? I know it was a long two years, so family members, colleagues, please stand. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'd also like to acknowledge Nina Farish, our Director of Human Resources, LaGuama Clemens, our Supervisor of Employee Relations, and Kimberly Hammond, our Training and Development Coordinator. Thank you very much. <laughs> this week marks the annual observance of American Education Week, when school districts across the country celebrate and showcase public education. Our school district is commemorating American Education Week by showcasing teaching and learning, our core mission. Every day this week, schools are posting promotional messages and using social media to publicize how students are becoming college, career, and citizen ready. We invite the public to follow our schools to see why Newport News Public Schools is the smart place to learn. At this time, we'll take about an eight minute break so that our honorees and their family and friends may leave if you choose to do so. You're welcome to stay with us for the rest of the board meeting. <laughs> During this time, our viewing audience will have the opportunity to view this month's school board spotlight. So we'll stand in recess for about eight minutes. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Over 300 student musicians formed the largest school band in the history of Newport News Public Schools during the first ever NNPS Marching Band Expo. The inaugural event kicked off with two elementary drum lines, seven middle school bands, and five high school marching bands, along with their auxiliary dance teams, combining their talents to perform a rousing rendition of the national anthem. From there, Exciting performances kept the crowd at Todd Stadium cheering the whole night. Riverside's Boomin' Bears and Johnson's Crimson Thunder showcased the amazing talents of the youngest percussionists in our city. These are the only elementary-aged drum lines in our school district, two more than most other school systems across the country. Anna Moyer, a middle and high school orchestra teacher, worked with school leaders and band directors to organize a wonderful showcase of musical talents birthed from hard work and hours of rehearsals by our dedicated students and talented educators. All five high school marching bands took turns showcasing this season's performance. The range of marching styles, choreography, and musical selections was a joy to witness in one sitting. It gave each band the chance to perform one more time before state assessments took place. It was also a wonderful opportunity for elementary and middle school students to be inspired by our high school musicians and experience what a well-directed marching band can achieve with precision and artistry. There was no competition between bands or points awarded. The NNPS Marching Band Expo was hosted to purely display the awesome talents of our students and staff to a supporting community. With a strong emphasis on college and career readiness, Newport News Public Schools graduates continue to set new milestones far beyond state averages. With the class of 2022, the Newport News Public Schools on-time graduation rate increased to 95.8%, while the dropout rate decreased to less than 1%. Over the last 14 years, these numbers have steadily improved thanks in no small part to the hard work and dedication of our students. 
The class of 2022 were sophomores when the pandemic hit. For a majority of their high school lives, this class had to adapt to school closures, virtual and hybrid learning, and a return to a new type of normal. To increase their graduation numbers under these conditions is unfathomable, and a true testament to their resiliency and perseverance. The class of 2022 was accepted into 120 colleges, universities, and military academies. 45% graduated with a 3.0 GPA or higher, and the graduates earned over 2,000 industry and career certifications. Leading the way is an achievable dream high school with a 100% graduation rate for the seventh year in a row, while all six Newport News high schools are well above the state average of 92.1%. To achieve these impressive numbers, Newport News Public Schools provides numerous options. Graduation coaches and attendance officers at each high school assist, encourage, and connect students to valuable resources as they work towards their graduation requirements. Students also have access to courses online, after school, and during the summer giving them more flexibility as they work towards advanced studies diplomas and receive the skills and tools needed for a future of success. Why wait until after high school when juniors in Newport News Public Schools are already attending college? Through the Community Captains Program, sophomores with a 3.4 GPA or higher can apply to Christopher Newport University, and if accepted, they will begin during their junior year. CNU and Newport News Public Schools created this Early Admission College Preparation Partnership in 2018, giving high school students, many of whom are first-generation college students, two years of early access to university learning opportunities and social events as well as support from dedicated CNU student mentors. All of the benefits, guidance, and earned college credits are completely free to the students and families these first two years. The first class of community captains started four years ago and are now sophomores at CNU. The fourth cohort has just started their journey, so the 53 newest community captains recently experienced their first on-campus event in mid-October. During this time, students and their families met the CNU administrators who guide the Community Captains program, as well as former community captains who now attend CNU full-time. They participated in an official open house, complete with a campus tour and an exploration of the many student experiences available to all captains. They were also welcomed by Interim President Adelia Thompson and spoke directly with staff and students about the academic courses available at CNU. During their first year as community captains, these high school juniors will be immersed in authentic college experiences, monthly presentations and program topics, and structured interactions with their CNU student mentors. The hope is that after they graduate from high school, the students will continue past their two-year preparation experience and commit to pursuing a college degree. Since each community captain has already been fully accepted to attend CNU, they can continue their course of studies while enjoying a number of benefits, including a dining scholarship, additional aid money, and other applicable scholarships. No matter what college these students choose to attend, the Community Captains Program is giving Newport News Public School students the knowledge and real-world experiences to transition smoothly to college and life beyond high school. Students from all across Newport News join together for the annual Stand Night at Todd Stadium. During halftime at the Warwick vs. Minchville football game and after Minchville's award-winning marching band performed, nearly 700 students gathered to stand together against bullying. This was the largest turnout ever in the history of Stand Night in Newport News Public Schools. All schools and grades were welcome to walk together alongside school leaders, police officers, elected officials, and community partners. Yates Elementary was well represented with the most elementary students marching around the track. 
while Gildersleeve Middle School arrived with 450 students who were attending the game as part of their first ever Homecoming Spirit Week. Gildersleeve also brought a massive team of 89 cheerleaders who created a custom cheer in support of unity and love. This allowed the Seahawk family to wrap up their week of festivities by standing up for bully prevention along with hundreds of students from across the city. I hope you enjoyed this month's school board spotlight. During our regular meetings, we provide time for the public to address the school board. These opportunities are scheduled in the early part of our agenda and also towards the end of the meeting. As advertised, citizens may submit comments via email up to 30 minutes prior to our meeting time to be included in the official meeting record. Um, for those of you joining us in person, the board considers this an opportunity to listen to your comments. Please understand that we will consider your concerns. We ask that you comply with our three minute time limit as you begin your comments. A green light will come on, a yellow light signals that you have 30 seconds remaining, and a red light and beep indicate your time is up. As your name is called, please come forward. I am seeing Linda Rayfield. Good evening. I'm with the Women's Club of Newport News, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, civic organization in the city. We started in 1909. Wow. So it was my honor to present this check to Free Kind for the Prevention <coughs> Project curriculum. We had a bottle auction, and Kyle Haas is a professional auctioneer. He's done this, this was the third one, and this year we raised $1,700. And it's my pleasure to present this. And we look forward to helping with that again in the future. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you, you for your community service. Yes. Thank you. Dr. James Graves. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Dr. James Graves. I'm also a CTE teacher at Denby High School. I'm a ninth grade lead transition teacher, and I'm the new president of NNEA, Newport News Education Association. I want to congratulate y'all on your victory, and I wish y'all speedy, ever recovery for, for the whole year. <laughs> I, I'm up here because I want you to know that me being a new president, executive board, and the building reps and all the members understand that we're going to work together. This is not a us versus them. We're going to work together for the betterment of all of our children in this community. I want you to hear that publicly from me. I told some of y'all in the interviews, but I'm letting you know now uh, in the public. Secondly, that we are on the way to collective bargaining, and you all have a copy of it. And I like to read it. <clears throat> New News Education Association consists of schools employees who are frontline experts at educating and caring for the children we love. The NNEA is fighting for an education system that exceeds what the community needs and places New News Public School students at the forefront of the Commonwealth in every way. As essential partners, we will collaborate with district leadership to accomplish mutual agreed upon strategic goals and objectives. The right to bargain for a competitive contract is essential to recruit and retain quality employees. I want to thank y'all for this opportunity, and I am going to make sure that we keep in touch. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all. We'll call her again in a moment. Let's go ahead to Pam Hall. Good evening.
Good evening and congratulations to everyone. I'm Pam Hall and I live in the Southeast community. We the people saved our democracy from becoming an autocracy. I still stand representing the over 400 petitioners to keep Huntington on two blocks of the five blocks of land where the school currently sits, keeping some continuity of the Southeast community legacy intact. Please reconsider. Thank you. Call for a second time, Octavia James. Do we have any other cards? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you all for your comments and thoughts this evening. We appreciate you taking time to come in. So we'll now move on to section three, the consent agenda, which includes 3.01 minutes from the work session on October 18, 2022, and 3.02 minutes from the regular meeting on October 18, 2022. 3.03 financial reports, including the revenue report for October 2022, the expense report for October 2022, child nutrition reports for October 2022. We also had 3.04, the personnel report. So at this time, can we have a motion to approve that consent agenda? Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Do we have a question? Any comments? Okay, Madam Clerk? Harris? Four. Hunter? Four. Bess? Four. Brown? Four. 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 Motion carries, six zero. Thank you. Also at this time, may I have a motion to approve the superintendent's personnel recommendation? Madam Chair, I move to approve the superintendent's personnel recommendations for Dr. Edward Van Dyke Elementary Principal location to be determined. Jennifer Maureen, Supervisor of Health and PE. Suzanne Warner, Supervisor of Special Education. Second. Second. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Best. Four. Brown. Four. Ely. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries 6-0. Okay, Dr. Parker, would you please introduce the administrative appointments? It would be my pleasure, uh, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I will start by introducing Jennifer Maureen. Maureen as the new Supervisor of Health and Physical Education. Jennifer, would you please stand? Good to see you this evening. <laughs> Ms. Maureen has a master's degree in education and administration and supervision from Liberty University, a bachelor of science in physical education from East Carolina University. She has, uh, also has a postgraduate professional license in administration and supervision for pre-K through 12 and health and physical education pre-K through 12. Ms. Maureen currently works as an instructional specialist in health and physical education with Newport News City Public Schools. She has worked as a teacher at Crittenden Middle School uh, a, phys a physical education and health specialist at Saunders Elementary School and McIntosh Elementary School. She has also worked as the lead physical education teacher at Gildersleeve Middle School and as a high school summer health and physical education and outdoor education instructor. Congratulations, Ms. Maureen, on this uh, promotion, and uh, we look forward to great things from you and your leadership. Did you bring anyone with you this evening uh, who's celebrating this moment with you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Our next appointee is Suzanne Warner as the new supervisor of special education. Good evening. Ms. Warner has a Master of Science in Educational Leadership from Old Dominion University and a Bachelor of Arts in Humanities and in Special Education from Bob Jones University. Ms. Warner currently works as a coordinator for special education compliance and transition for Northampton County Public Schools. She has worked as a special education teacher and grant writer for York County Public Schools and Hampton City Schools. Ms. Warner has also worked as an interim administrator, conductor, and teacher for Liberty Arts, Liberty Academy of the Arts in Hampton, Hampton Virginia. We welcome uh, Suzanne to this position and to Newport News. And did you bring anyone this evening as you introduce yourself to the board? Oh, congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> 
And Madam Chair, our final appointee this evening is Dr. Edward Van Dyke as one of, as, um, as an elementary principal to be determined. Give him a round of applause. And Dr. Van Dyke has a doctorate of education in educational policy and planning and leadership from the College of William and Mary, a master of science in education from Old Dominion University, and a bachelor of arts in history from Wheeling Jesuit University. Dr. Van Dyke currently works as a principal at, at Charles City Elementary School in Charles City County uh, Public Schools. Dr. Van Dyke has worked as, as an assistant principal, a special advancement coach, and interim assistant principal, as well as a sixth grade history teacher at Berkeley Middle School in Williamsburg, James City County Public Schools. Uh, Dr. Van Dyke has also worked as a sixth grade history teacher at Tarrant Middle School with Hampton City Public Schools. And this evening, we are welcoming you to the Newport News family, uh, Dr. Van Dyke. And I'm assuming this young lady here beside you is not your daughter, but it's probably your wife. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Welcome aboard to the Newport News. And let's give them a round of applause as well. And look forward to your leadership as well, sir. And Madam Chair, that concludes the appointments for this evening. Well, thank you all for joining our Newport News family here, and we appreciate you bringing your talents to us. Uh, let's see, so the next item on our agenda is section four, action items. Um, on the agenda this evening is 4.01. We're going to revisit item 4.01 from our October board meeting. On October 18th, the board considered action item 4.01 a parliamentary per, per, um, excuse me, procedure issue is raised about the board's vote on the item and the board wishes to revisit the final vote on this item 4.01. I therefore ask that a motion to approve item 4.01 be made and seconded in order to properly document a final vote on the board's proposed CIP as was amended um, by a properly adopted motion by Mr. Brown. Madam Chair, I move to approve the amended FY 2024 FY 2028 CIP plan. Second. Any questions? Okay, let's call the roll. Harris? Four. Hunter? Four. Best? Four. Brown? Four. Ely? Searles Law? Four. Motion carries 6-0. Thank you. Next item is 4.02. We have some new and revised policies. Dr. Parker? Yes, Madam Chair, I will call uh, Mrs. Brooks to the podium to respond to any questions that the board may have regarding those uh, policies that were presented for approval this evening. So yes, members of the board, you did receive in board docs um, the proposed policies for this evening. Any questions that you might have at this time? Uh, Madam Chair, I'll ask one question on uh, policy BEE, -E, uh, where it references uh, 680 hours. And as I understand, the um, policies to establish, I'm sorry, no, not BEE, -E, I'm sorry, IC, policy IC, school year, school day, mm -hmm. <coughs> references 680 hours. Um, and so as, as I understand it, the policy was to establish 990 hours. And so the question is just to the, the inclusion of the, six, of the paragraph on 680 hours. Um, the 680 was referencing the four disciplines of English, math, science, and history is my understanding. But in total, it's 990 instructional hours per year, those content areas. Oh, so it is, uh, the reference is that 680 hours would be devoted to those four content areas. Correct. 990 hours in total for all content areas. Correct. Okay, do we have any other questions? Well, thank you so much oh, to you and your you. Uh, committee for presenting the policies. We appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Okay, I think we'll break these up a little bit here, um, take them uh, in some groups. We have BEE, um, Electronic Participation in Board Meetings, and then DKB, Salary Deductions Revised, and then IC, the School Year, School Day Revised. 
Uh, may I have a motion to approve these policies? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve BEE, uh, DBK revised, and IC school day revised. Thank you. Second. Uh, and, uh, Madam Chair, just in regards to the motion, I believe that uh, Vice Chair intended to say DKB. Yeah. What did I say? As opposed to DBK. DBK. I'm sorry. DBK. DBK. Yes, I did. Thank you. Second, second the motion. Thank you. Any question? Okay, please call the roll. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Best. Four. I'm sorry. Brown. Four. Illy. Four. Sorrell's Law. Four. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Next, we will consider um, IHAMA teaching about drugs, alcohol, and tobacco revised. JLCI recommendation of medication by school employees, a new policy. So we'll take those two together. Madam Chair, I'd like to move that we accept item IHAMA, teaching about drugs, alcohol, and tobacco, and JLCI, recommendation of medication by school employees. Second. Second. Brown or Harris? Harris. Rock, paper, scissors. All right, any discussion on those two? Please call the roll. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Best. Four. Brown. Four. Ely. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries six zero. Thank you. And last but not least, we'll take the last two together. We have IJA instructional materials with sexually explicit content. And then JH student attendance revised. Uh, Madam Chair, if I could, I'd like to make a motion to approve IJA. Um, separately from JH. I'd like to make a motion to approve IJA instructional materials with sexually explicit content. Okay, do I have a second? Second, second. Okay, any discussion? Um, Madam Chair, I'd just like to uh, give my compliments to the to the committee and to all of the, the board members for the, the work that went into this. Uh, there were several revisions and I'm uh, happy that, uh, I'm pleased to report that the revision that we worked on to delegate to uh, identify responsibility for execution to the superintendent that was an important um, piece to have in this policy uh, and we achieved that and so for that reason tonight I'm, I'm happy to be able to support it. Okay. Any other comments? <coughs> and to be clear we're, you're voting on IJA only. Only. Yes. Okay. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Best. Four. Brown. Four. Ely. Four. Sorrell's Law. Four. Motion carries six zero. Thank you. And then the last policy we will con consider this evening is JH, the attendance policy. Do I have a second? Second. Or, I'm sorry, a, a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve policy JH student attendance. Second. Any discussion? Um, Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, point out uh, my same reasons for supporting uh, policy IJA or my reasons that I'm unable to support JH. I do believe that it's important that the board uh, exercises its will to place responsibility for execution of policies directly with the superintendent as that is our, uh, our one employee. And then the uh, superintendent would then uh, delegate responsibility through procedures and here in JH I didn't see that clearly done throughout and for those for that reason uh, I'm unable to support JH but I hope that I'm uh, incorrect and that this is a, a policy that's very much needed I recognize that the policy is needed that we need an attendance policy uh, and that uh, this is part of our accreditation picture but um, for the reason that I stated of uh, ensuring proper um, what I believe is proper uh, authority uh, for execution that that's the reason why I can't support this policy tonight. Okay. Any other comments? 
just make a point of clarification that uh, <clears throat> I did share with Mr. Brown regarding the delegation of responsibilities and policy. Um, by default, superintendent is charged with executing the policy of the board, the approved policy of the school board. That is uh, not only inferred, it could be listed literally, but it, even if it's not listed literally in a, in a policy, uh, by the board passing a vote, mm -hmm. passing a policy by vote, um, the superintendent is obligated to implement that policy. Um, so we, we are really talking about something that if the board pass approves this policy will still fall under the work of the superintendent and his staff to implement. Um, so it's, uh, it's really a, just a, a matter of procedure whether you, de you indicate that in a policy or not. And I, I don't necessarily believe it needs to be live in every policy that the board passes. Um, based on my job description, I, I, I implement the policy, the approved policy of the school board. So uh, that's, uh, and I had that conversation <coughs> with Mr. Browner earlier regarding that, but I do understand his concern. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to research a little bit further your concern. Mr. Brown, I really do appreciate you bringing it to my attention ahead of time. And in con consultation um, with legal here uh, in the division, I understand my understanding of the proposed language of this pro uh, policy is it is written such that it follows state code, um, specifically identifying the attendance officer as a person who can file, you know, court complaints uh, regarding the attendance violations. And so I was very curious as to what the nuance was, why this was written a little bit differently mm -hmm. than the others that we had, and that was that was the response that I received. So. Right, any other discussion that we have? All right, super. So we had a second, and now we're ready to call the roll. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Harris? Four. Hunter? Four. Best? Four. Brown? Against? Ely? Four. Searles Law? Four. Motion carries 5 1. Thank you. I really do appreciate this board's attention to detail on the policies that we pass. Thank you very, very much. Our next um, section we'll move on to is section five, reports and information. I think we have 5.01, yes, our Chair. monthly school update. Yes, Madam Chair, before we uh, get started with the monthly school update, our appointees this evening, if you, you are welcome to stay, but we always offer the opportunity if you're, if you're, if, if dinner's waiting, you are welcome to transition with your evening and then we, we congratulate you again on your appointments. Um, we'll get started with the monthly school update, uh, Madam Chair, and we, um, as, as, been as has been customary, we bring, the, bring to the board a few informational items we'd like to share with the board and the community uh, each month. Uh, so my presenters uh, for the monthly school update, if you will take your places and get us kicked off, we'll give a moment for everyone to clear out if, as needed and get started with that. And we'll start with teaching and learning. All right, Dr. Manglemont. Good afternoon or evening, I should say, right? How time flies. Good evening, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, Dr. Parker, members of the board. Tonight's update is short and sweet. Um, and I have the privilege to talk to you about some good things that have happened in the last two, couple weeks and some things we need to look forward to in the, the upcoming few weeks. Um, the first is I'm very happy and very proud to provide you an update on our first LEGO League regional competition. It happened on Saturday, November 5th at Crittenden Middle School. The Super Powered event had the leading participation from Newport News Public Schools. We had 65% of all teams participating were from our division. So we're very, very proud. <laughs> Our teams presented on an innovative project. They had the opportunity to present to a panel of judges just like Science Fair, but unlike Science Fair, they get three trial runs and then two full runs that they're judged on in order for the project to work because the project requires coding, it requires critical thinking, and it requires the, the knowledge of the engineering design process. It's very complex, and our students this year had to think of and reimagine a creative um, solution to a better energy tomorrow. What we saw is that five of our teams 
they placed and or received an award. We saw that the Newport News Telecom team, they earned the Volunteers Award for Outstanding Dedication. Our very own Deer Park Elementary team earned the Robot Performance and Robot Design Award. General Stanford and Hines earned the Innovative Project Award. And lastly, our Sedgefield Eagles earned the Core Values Award and they're moving on to the semifinal competition at Harrisonburg, Virginia at James Madison University. We want to make sure that we give some shout outs, right? Because this was a very big competition that required a lot of hard work. Our students, we want to thank you for your perseverance and your resilience and the excellent team problem solving skills that you showed us. The competition, this is not an easy one. And I think that our students rose to the occasion and we are very, very proud of every single one of our 13 teams. We also want to give a shout out to our parents because without their encouragement and without your support, our students wouldn't be here today. And we also want to thank our coaches. Our coaches are the foundation of this work. Without them, we wouldn't have teams. And this year has been challenging and there's a lot going on post pandemic and our teachers not only dedicated their time teaching every single day, but the many hours after school working with the robotics teams to ensure that they had a, a project that they were proud of representing and competing with. And then lastly, I would really be um, remiss not to mention our Newport News STEM team foundational to the STEM program here in Newport News Public Schools with the lead of our supervisor, Tammy Byron, Jennifer Barker, our specialist, and Kevin Newell, who is our really our rock and the heart of the first robotics competition. So we want to make sure that we give them the credit that they deserve. So thank you to all of you. We also want to, we're very excited to, we're not relaunching, but we're expanding our Newport News Model Classroom program. We have expanded this program to 66 exemplary teachers in all grade levels in all content areas here in Newport News. And these teachers went through a rigorous application and selection process. They are truly the exemplars and they rise to the occasion for us. The purpose of our program is to provide that ongoing support for continuous improvement with all teachers, but also to inspire our teachers who feel like, yeah, I'm doing good work, but you know what? I can be just that much better and I'd really like to hone my craft. And then lastly, it is a support for all principals who then can use this as a support for the observation feedback loop. So any teacher or principal can request this. A teacher will be immersed for one full week in a model classroom, learning best practices, co-teaching, giving um, takeaways for classroom management. We provide the, um, the substitutes and they fully immerse. So it's a great program. We're excited to have this and expand upon it. And we, we hope to continue this with more teachers in the future. We also had some really exciting college visits. I know that we're excited about that. We took 22 of our Newport News students were invited to Virginia Tech's fall visitation. And of the 22, 16 could attend. And they had the opportunity to learn what Virginia Tech is all about through a multicultural perspective where they really got to tour the campus, but also get a feel of what life is like at Tech through the eyes of students and other faculty and campus staff. We also had a Spartan visit. Ours, we had seven buses and 165 Newport News students go to Norfolk State this past Saturday. That's incredible. And our youth development lead, I would be remiss not to mention Ms. Bridget Adams, who really just takes this program to full heart and does so much for students on the weekend. She took, of those 115, were students that are involved in the Newport News, My Brother's Keeper and My Sister's Keeper. They not only got to do the campus tour, but they got to go to the football game. Mm -hmm. So future Spartans, there we are. Yeah. 
<laughs> we, we also um, have our magnet, and just looking ahead, our magnet and specialty programs here, our applications are open for all parents who are listening at home. That application deadline is going to close on December 5th, so make sure that we go ahead and apply. We have magnet programs that um, span from kindergarten all the way up to grade 12, from global studies to environmental science to STEM and health sciences. So lots of selection and student choice opportunities in Newport News. We also have specialty programs. We're all aware of the amazing Achievable Dream Academy and Achievable Dream Middle and High School. We also have the International Baccalaureate Program at Warwick High School for rising ninth graders and our point option, which is that non-traditional model for students who are looking for a personalized small group setting. And then lastly, we all know we expanded our Virtual Learning Academy. That is continuing on for next year. We piloted elementary this year. Um, the pilot is going wonderfully. We have amazing leadership under Chris Smith and Miss Stephanie Bean, who are doing great work at the um, Virtual Learning Academy. So next year, applications are open to anyone who is interested in grades K through 12. And the website if you want to learn a little bit more about each program. As we look ahead, the fourth quarter ended, so parents, listen, um, just in case, report cards will be posted on Parent View tomorrow. If your child is anything like my older daughter, they, she kind of avoided that topic with me. <laughs> so it will be on Parent View, so go ahead and look. Um, grades are posted weekly, but it's always nice to get that final grade and report card with teacher comments. Um, we also have a virtual senior family chat that is scheduled. It is November 17th, 6 p.m. It, um, you have to register for this one through Parent View. If parents are unable to make it, we will have plenty that are reoccurring throughout the year. Check with your school or your school counselor to find out a little bit more. But it really is an informational session for any family member who has a senior to help prepare them for next steps, whether they be work, college, or career. All right. So that concludes the update for Newport News for this month. Are there any questions? Councilor Dana, would you? Um, share those application dates one more time. Absolutely, and if we want to go back just visually, December 5th, the application is due. We will notify all parents by mail mid-January about acceptance to each program. Okay. And application details and what it entails, they're all online at that URL right there. If you go to Newport News Public Schools and, and slash magnet, you'll be able to find it. I have a question. <laughs> Dr. Magma, regarding the model classroom, you said that any teacher could, could request it or any administrator could request it for a teacher. Absolutely. And then they would be placed with a model teacher for one week. Correct? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And you know, and we really think that one week immersion, you know, with a substitute, are we taking away instruction? But we think it enhances instruction. So for mm -hmm. that one week you're taking away, think of all the days ahead that that teacher is bringing best practice and modeling um, in their classroom. Any other questions? Thank you so much. You are welcome. welcome. Yep, Have a good evening. We'll move on to item 5.02, proposed FY23 legislative program, Dr. Parker. Thank you, Madam Chair, and we will have our legislative consultant, Mr. Pat Finneran, come forward. Hi, <laughs> welcome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Parker. Um, Good evening, Mr. Earl Zog, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairman, Dr. Bass, members of the board, and everybody else here tonight. Uh, it's great to be back, um, and I really appreciate this opportunity to work with the school board and the superintendent on the legislative program uh, again this year. Uh, well, it's that time of year for a look at the upcoming General Assembly session and legislative issues of importance to the school board. Uh, the legislative program is the school board's uh, opportunity to convey what you consider key issues uh, for the 2023 session, and the draft has been posted on board docs for the community to see as well. Uh, during the session, of course, legislators will introduce um, sometimes hundreds of education bills, and the board will be kept up to date, board and superintendent will be kept up to date as the session goes on with this. And I think I'm driving tonight, so let's see if that works. Yes. Um, so this year's General Assembly is what they call the short session. Last year was the budget session, 60 days. We all know it went a lot longer. Um, it's scheduled to adjourn February 25th. And 
If we're lucky, the final disposition will be at the veto session scheduled for early April. Uh, hopefully there won't be any delays this year. Uh, other key dates, I just mentioned a couple of them. Uh, November 10th was actually last week, uh, the VSBA Delegate Assembly, in which the VSBA uh, settled, settled on its legislative program. We were ably uh, represented there by uh, Chairman uh, Cyril's Law, and Dr. Best was waiting in the wings as the alternate <laughs> in case you needed to do that, so thank you. Um, December 6th will be the, uh, our, what is now an annual Take Your Legislator uh, to School Day, and this will be held at the Aviation Academy, and we're very pleased to show off that, um, that, that uh, program and have been working with them uh, to set this up. Uh, December 15th is the governor's budget proposal, so you'll be hearing a lot of news about money, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, legislative wrap, but just to take a quick look at last year, um, we, the 2022 session, uh, there was really plenty to celebrate, even though it was a very long session. Uh, lots to celebrate, including the largest ever increase in K-12 funding. Uh, they approved a 5% teacher salary for two years, both, both biennium, uh, the full biennium. Uh, school facility funding increases, SOQ uh, increases, uh, things about, the, actually it's the support staff cap, not the staff support cap. Uh, and also the, uh, they, they were approved a, a budget amendment that we introduced uh, through Delegate Shelley Simons for a $275,000 appropriation to the Aviation Academy, and that's what, one reason we wanted to go there this year, to show the legislators, you know, what they're investing in. So with, last year was a great, great head start uh, on, on much needed education investments, but the next um, slide is going to show why we need to keep pressing on this. Uh, this was an interesting thing, and I didn't really know uh, this until just recently, but in 19... 2009 saw a huge decline because of the Great Recession in education funding. And despite the, the, the funding for this year, we're still averaging 5.4% less um, uh, when adjusted for inflation. That actually equals out to about $18 million more that the school division would have gotten had it kept up, just kept up with inflation since 2009. So there's still work to do. The Great Recession hit a lot of people hard hit education especially hard. Uh, but fortunately, the revenue projections for the upcoming year are good, and we'll take a quick look at that as well. Um, Virginia uh, ended the fiscal year, uh, June 30th, with a $1.9 billion surplus. Uh, the September revenue report, which is the latest we, latest I've seen, shows us uh, Virginia 500 million above projection for that month. And the surplus that, um, that I show up there, 1.9 billion, takes into account the billion dollars in tax rebates that's already given back. So that's that's already accounted for. Uh, so we're hoping that this, uh, it's, that it's, we think it's time to use this surplus to really completely re restore the funding that was lost during the, re re the Great Recession. And we'll, we'll be working on that. Um, key priorities, I'll show these here. Here, I'm just gonna go into them quickly in the next few slides. The first one, teacher recruitment, retention, and salaries. We all know the issues surrounding that, the need for, for highly qualified teachers, uh, attract them to not only to come here, but to stay. Uh, Virginia teachers' uh, pay is still more than $8,000 below the national average. Uh, and of course, we can't fault those two 5% uh, pay increases, but uh, inflation is really minimizing those, those pay raises. Mm -hmm and the teacher shortage, as we all know, is severe. So the NNPS position on this is to invest the revenue surplus, at least some of it, in, in an FY 2024 additional teacher salary increase, possibly asking for, uh, for the state to not require a, a match on that. I'm not sure that would be successful, but to, to really say we need to do more for teachers in the coming year. Uh, state funding, provide some state funding for licensing and test fees. Um, expand some teacher development programs. There's some, some that the state has invested in, I think three throughout the state. We'd like to take a look at seeing if they can expand that uh, statewide. Um, and then also incentivize retired teachers to return. 
and that could be done by allowing retired teachers to come back um, without the full one year break in service and not lose their VRS. So we'll be taking a look at those, those uh, issues. And again, as I go on, if you have questions, I can take notes or you can comment at the end. Um, the next priority position, again, uh, not a new one, school facility funding. <coughs> the 2021 state report just uh, last June uh, said that it would cost $25 billion to replace all schools over mm -hmm. years old in Virginia. Uh, that's not repairing all the other things that we need of, of, of the rest of the schools that are, that are in this state. So huge, huge backlog of, of work to be done on schools. The General Assembly is to be applauded. They dedicated one and a quarter billion dollars to school facilities. Uh, that's, that's the, I think, the biggest amount I've ever seen. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's great. We need to find out, find some more ways to increase revenue uh, for our schools. Uh, one of those uh, could be to uh, permit school boards to finance capital projects with unexpended local funds uh, at the end of the year, uh, to put that into uh, capital improvement, uh, and also allow for a referendum, uh, a vote by citizens uh, by, for all localities to temporarily increase local sales taxes up to 1% for school facilities only. And that's uh, been proposed uh, that hasn't been successful. It's been bottled up in one committee so far, uh, but we'll take a look at that. Uh, standards of quality, that's, those are formulas that are driven, that, that drive the school funding formula. that tells you how much you're going to get for teachers, how much you're going to get for X, Y, and Z in, in, in the schools. Um, and the Virginia Board of Education updated 11 of these standards uh, in 2000. And, 21 and, and addressed three of them last year, which was amazing. We, we uh, had not expected them to be able to do that. Uh, so they increased money for at-risk add-on uh, uh, funding for, for students in poverty, which helps school divisions like New Purdue's quite a bit. Uh, they funded additional reading specialists, and they uh, funded uh, elementary school principal, one elementary school principal and assistant principal in every school division in every school. So that's something we, of course, already had, but it does drive additional funds to us because of that. I'm not gonna go over the rest of there. There's a lot of others. They were in last year's packet, so I won't go over them, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to call me back for that. Uh, another priority position is to eliminate the support staff cap. I got it right there. Um, in 19, in 2009, the Great Recession again, um, the state just arbitrarily said, we're not gonna fund as many support staff as we used to and, and dramatically cut the funding for support staff. And those are, those are people such as food service staff, librarians, administrative assistants, social workers, psychologists, family engagement coordinators, custodians, uh, clerical staff. So we were fortunate in, in, in uh, past General Assembly that they came back and included an additional $109 million to start addressing this. And they moved the uh, ratio from 17, point, 17 and three quarters um, per, per persons per 1,000 students to 20. And in FY24, if we can hold the line, uh, the budget calls for an additional funding to raise the cap to 21 support positions per 1,000 students. So, the position here is to maintain or raise the additional funding in FY24 to increase support staff. We want to make sure that that doesn't get washed away um, in any way. Let's see, technology, equipment, and internet access. This is another one that is really a, a major, it becoming a major issue. Uh, as you know, you all invested heavily in technology, people, equipment. Uh, over the past year, for you, few years because of the pandemic. Uh, we have it now, we have a great program out there, all students have access, and we want to make sure that we, re we retain that access. What's happening is that a lot of school divisions uh, are using federal funds, uh, pandemic funds, to help with this, the payments on these. And I've been told it's upwards of $4 million additional cost uh, to the school division. 
than before the pandemic. So when that funding runs out, which is FY24, we're facing a, a kind of a funding a budget cliff, which we're all going to fall off of together mm -hmm. if the state doesn't come back somehow and say, we, we, we can create a funding stream dedicated to this. And I think this funding cliff may help drive some of the urgency on that issue. Uh, this is a brand new position that I don't think any of you have seen yet, and I apologize for that. It was just raised um, yesterday afternoon. We got word that a recent court ruling um, uh, said that tickets issued through the school bus stop arm cameras have been dismissed due to a loophole in the law. Um, the court ruling states that in order to enforce tickets, based on stop arm camera evidence, uh, the state must prove that children are being picked up or discharged at the time. So what happens now is cameras capture the car and the stop arm and show that the stop mm -hmm. arm was out, the car was going through it. So uh, a clever lawyer read the actual law and said the law says that you can only impose that fine if students are being discharged or picked up. Prove to me that one of those happened. Now, at the time, the, the, the person in the court is a police officer that's paid to review all the tapes and come in and bring, bring that as evidence. He obviously, or she, couldn't say that what, they, what they were doing. So we're looking for a way to around that loophole. Mm. Uh, I know that the transportation is working on some issues, uh, temporary fixes. This would be a longer term fix. And of course, if we can do this, it wouldn't become effective till probably uh, June 30th. So uh, take a long time to get that there. In the meantime, the, the threat of, of, of fine will diminish as more people learn about this defense that's now been brought out by that attorney. Um, and just a little bit of, uh, got some nice, uh, little background in this. In September alone, there were 2,803 violations of a, a car, a vehicle, passing a stop school bus with the arm out. That was in September in Newport News alone, 2,803. Um, so uh, working with uh, Mr. Wallen, uh, city attorney, uh, the city legislative liaison, Shea Coates, um, and, and others, to try to fashion something that will um, help close the loophole on this. Now, this. Madam Chair, I'm trying to say to you that um, our office is notified by the police department um, that I believe it was last month that I think only one son case was reported to the police department. Mm -hmm. And that was in the Newport News report. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm trying to say that this is something that we're trying to get to the bottom of. Thank you. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Once it starts spreading, the news about this starts spreading, more and more cases will be dismissed, not just in Newport News, but around, I, I guess, around the state. Right. So thank you. Yeah. So this is a significant thing because we'll, we'll begin to lose that, um, that ability to enforce uh, you know, the, the stop, stop law. Uh, so if, you know, if, with your approval, we'll go forward with this. We'll, we'll uh, uh, draft a natural legislative position to put in your legislative program uh, and then work with one of our legislators to quickly get this uh, up and running in, in good legislation. Um, next steps, um, obviously, you're going to provide legislators with a, a draft copy after the Take Your Legislator to School Day and have a, some short conversation about this. Uh, this will be an action item at the December board meeting. So if there are some uh, questions, comments, changes, suggestions, uh, let, please let me know. Let, let me know through the superintendent however you'd like. Uh, we'll continue to meet um, also with the Joint Government Relations Committee, which was set up by the superintendent and board last uh, about a year, year and a half ago, and that's a meeting with, I work with the city's legislative liaison. Uh, Ms. Searles Law is on that, Mr. Ely has been on that, um, and uh, one of the city council members, Ms. Tina Vick, has been on that. And so it's a great way just to get together and, and work together on some common issues. Uh, and then finally support the, the, look, this program, your program, during the session. So if you have any comments or questions or... Well, <clears throat> Mr. Fenner, I'll have a comment and a question. I'm 
very grateful that we could unretire you and, and have you come back and, and work Appreciate with us. That. Though, though that's the shortest retirement in history. <laughs> uh, glad, glad, to, glad to have you with us and uh, appreciate all the service that you provided over the years. It's been very helpful, I know, in the last session uh, in getting the, the money for the Aviation Academy and for, I believe, um, the, the IB, our uh, Health Sciences Academy as well. So that was very, uh, very helpful to us. Uh, and looking forward to hopefully a successful session again. Um, the question is regards to, I think, going back to slide eight, which is the facility funding. I believe it is a consensus of the board um, to have a capital savings account um, type legislation. We've talked about that uh, in the past, um, where we would uh, be able to take money from our unexpended operating funds at the end of the year and save that money towards uh, our CIP expenses in a, in a future time period. And uh, uh, I believe that that's got um, uh, support by the board, and, and I'd like to offer that up as, a, uh, as another position uh, there. And as well, uh, I believe that there is a patron, uh, a delegate that's willing to sponsor that legislation for us. And so uh, I'm excited about that potential opportunity because it would, uh, it would certainly go some ways towards us being able to uh, build, build and construct schools. Is that first bullet intended to be that? That, that was not intended to be that. Okay. It's very similar, though. And yeah. so what this would do is, um, what that would do is just allow school boards to take unexpended local funds and use them on capital projects. It doesn't create a savings account, though. It doesn't create a long-term um, uh, thing. So I think that's a little bit different. So mm -hmm. I'll look into it. And then if you, if you permit me, I'll talk with Mr. Brown or others. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the superintendent, of course, on the language for that. Because let's have that discussion. I know, I know, we're not a, we're not allowed to have any savings. Right. The city, the money would have to stay on the city side, which would be, um, you know, and we would be, we would have to even if that bullet right there is approved mm -hmm. under current legislation, um, school divisions are not allowed to accrue funding mm -hmm. uh, under, for, for said purpose. So, in order to accomplish that first bullet, they would have to create a capital savings account on the city side, mm -hmm. right? Which is why I interpreted the right. first bullet to be it, exactly what Mr. Brown was talking about. Very similar. I'm not sure that this first bullet was intended to be a long-term account, but um, there's also already been legislation proposed for the first bullet mm -hmm. in last session, which failed. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that the, the legislator is going to bring it back again. So we can look at this and ma yes, maybe merge these together. Um, so thank you very much for that. Yeah adds another dimension to that to that bullet. Madam Chair, I have a question for <coughs> I recently shared with you that two school divisions had uh, um, were approved for one per, for a bond rep, to provide bond referendums for one percent sales tax mm -hmm. in RICO and I can't can't remember the other school division. Do you know um, how they what process I know this one is was is for all school divisions, but it didn't pass last year. Right. Do we need to have a separate position for just Newport News? I just want to. Yeah, thank you very much. I think the other one was Chesterfield, and uh, they did have bond referendums. I think the issue there, and I'm not sure if there's a, a lawyer in the room that can help me with this, but I think the issue there is that counties um, have to um, go through that bond referendum and ask the voters to do it, whereas cities can actually just issue bonds on their own. Now, I may be a little bit off on that, but that's my understanding of it. So, but the, uh, the way they went about it in those counties was that the, uh, the counties actually proposed the, uh, the, the referendum. They proposed the amount. They ran the program, um, did the publicity with, the, with heavy support, of course, from the school division. The superintendent was a major player in making sure that, that uh, the word was getting out and going to meetings and meeting with folks. So it's something um, uh, that really county run and school division support, because that's the way it has to be. The school division can't issue the bonds. And I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe Mr. Wallen does. I know in, in other respects, counties have very different regulations than yes. cities too um, right. under the code, um, but perhaps. Yeah, I think city. Gloucester and Ryko, they're all counties. Yeah, they, they, the cities can issue the bonds themselves I believe the counties have to ask uh, voters. Okay. But I'll, I will look into so that more. So could we, could we 
just bring back what the process for the, for the December meeting, what it would sure. look like for a city entity, so we can, I, I mean, we're all in favor of that, but that didn't pass last year, and we don't want to be left out again if we, mm -hmm. if right. we can move something forward mm -hmm. individually. Right. Absolutely. I think one of my biggest concerns that you mentioned tonight is the priori priority position for passing, you know, the stop school bus enforcement. Yes. I would imagine that other school boards in our area even are going to be concerned about that. So us being able to keep our students safe um, outside of a loophole is going to be really important. Right. And I have to commend Mr. Wallen for bringing this to my attention immediately. and. Uh, getting this on the books right away. Uh, I think other school divisions will probably jump right on this and add, either add this or support whatever we're going to do uh, because it, it will, I'm sure it will impact school divisions across the, the, the state. Definitely. I'd like to see us be, you know, a driving force in, in getting right. this taken care of. We can work with VSBA, VAS, yeah. and others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Hey, thank you so much. Right. It is a joy having you back it's with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. I'll see you in December. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. We'll move on to um, item 5.03, student discipline update. Dr. Parker, do we have a presentation? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, it's November, and every November we bring back a uh, general update on student discipline, um, usually using uh, looking at the previous year's uh, data. Uh, Mr. Ransom, Dr. Ransom here is uh, going to lead that presentation. Um, Dr. Ransom, we're all yours. Good evening, Madam Chair, Searles Law, Vice Chair Best, members of the board, and Dr. Parker. I come before you this evening to provide you with an update on student conduct and discipline. We remain proud to appear before you annually to review the social, emotional instruction that is discipline in Newport News Public Schools in alignment with the strategic plan we look at the data, the areas where we shine, where there is room to grow, reflect on our practices, and inform you of next steps. As a reminder, the 1920 school year saw the conclusion of the previous state reporting mechanism known as discipline, crime, and violence. The notable absence in this data is the 2021 school year. The majority of the students learn virtually or in a hybrid model. Therefore, the discipline data render only 52 incidents and therefore it would be misleading to include it in comparison to last year when we resumed in-person instruction. Therefore, we are comparing school year 1920 to school year 21-22. However, please note for the purposes of state reporting, the school year concluded on March 12, 2020. So, the 1920 school year data points are a total of 119 days. However, even with 61 additional days in the 21-22 school year, you will see that the number of overall incidents decreased by 40%, number of students involved 27% decrease, 40% decrease in infractions, and a 19% decrease in removals from instruction. We're encouraged by this data. While it seemed to be a testy year, our data doesn't show that we are trending in the wrong direction. Our efforts to decrease disproportionality continue to bear fruit. In school year 1920, the last comparable year of data, black students were 70.7% of discipline incidents. The 21-22 school year saw a decrease down to 67.1%. This is a change of 3.6%. Before we review our areas of growth, we want to draw attention to the impact that the 2021 school year had nationally on the behavioral development of our learners. 87% of public schools 
have seen a negative impact in social emotional development, we too have seen a negative <coughs> impact, particularly as it relates to cell phone usage. I want to point your attention to the special education students involved in discipline incidents and overall removals from instruction. The entire circle represents 100% of the student body with the lighter blue being the percentage of those students that are students with disabilities. In school year 1920, the last comparable year of data, black students were 19.7% of discipline incidents. The 21-22 school year saw a decrease to 18.1% that is a change of 1.3%. And this is only students with disabilities. Students with disabilities, sorry. Yes, sir. Thank you for that correction. This reflects an increased effort to emphasize tier one instruction, support administrators to make individualized decisions and apply accommodations with fidelity, which were our stated goals last year. Removals from instructions decreased, la increased last year, excuse me. Instruction remains a priority and students learn best from direct instruction in the classroom. So efforts were made to ensure that students rebuilt the necessary resilience as they returned to the traditional school day. One reassuring data point, however, is that students across most racial and ethnic categories saw a generally equal number of removals, which shows our work around equitable discipline practices has remained consistent. We are seeing measure of disproportionality as it relates to our students with disabilities and removal from instruction versus general education students between school year 1920 and school year 2122. Students with disabilities account for a smaller degree of the student population, but their removals are on pace with all students. We would like to see them account for a much smaller percentage of the overall removals. Student Advancement continues to partner with Student Conduct and Discipline to refine our practices, increase staffing, and build uh, skill around this work. At the start of the current school year, the cell phone policy was updated to reflect a system of warning, remediation, confiscation, and parent communication, followed by a punitive measure. This adjusted approach after a two-year period, which saw an increased usage of technology and instruction, has contributed to a ri rising number of violations. As students adjust and parents provide support, we expect these numbers to decline. Families are being asked to partner with the school division to keep students accountable and decrease recidivism. The ramifications of continued physical altercations are plainly communicated in writing and a system of checks and balances are put in place to encourage students to make smarter and safer choices. The student success team process is being refined to address discipline, chronic absenteeism, and other factors that lead to poor decision making. General education students and students with disabilities can also be provided a fu fun, excuse me, functional behavioral assessment or behavior intervention plan, both with both of which allow for more tier three targeted interventions. The Virginia tiered systems of supports is the model used throughout the Commonwealth to teach expected behavior and refine systems that allow for more instructional time through tiered, tried and true, data-driven classroom management techniques. Newport News Public Schools invested in the work and 10 of our master teachers coached selected building leaders in best practices that were then disseminated through faculty meetings. 
this model, which compensates these teacher leaders as they build capacity amongst their peers, is now being replicated throughout our region. The results speak for themselves as school year 2022 saw a pre-pandemic return to our previously high levels of VTSS implementation. Despite the ongoing successes, we are not, excuse me, despite the ongoing successes, we will not become complacent. We still have work to do. We will continue our ongoing work refining systems around professional best practices. We have begun to increase our staffing, including a hearing officer and coordinator and behavior coaches on the elementary level. We will continue to reinforce our systems for tier one instruction and support a common infrastructure for the implementation of effective innovations, including VTSS, to achieve desired outcomes for students. I am so happy to announce that we're going to host our very first ever Student Conduct and Discipline Conference in January uh, at the Marriott. We have the Grand Ballroom and it's going to feature the guru, none other than uh, Dr. Terry Scott. And he is a distinguished professor from the University of Louisville. Um, he is an accomplished researcher specializing in behavior and emotion. He has done over 300 presentations. He is an author of four books, 100 publications. Uh, we're we're going to have Dr. Scott here on day one. It's going to be focused on advanced leadership, and he is going to really work with them using a planning guide on look fors on things that they're going to have to do with the with the grown people, with the adults, um, as well as. Um, He's going to create examples for them for things so they'll know exactly what they're going to need to see in the, in the school. He's going to teach them how to build a plan. Uh, and then day two, day two is geared towards school personnel. So the teachers uh, have the opportunity to come in in their session to work with Dr. Scott. And the focus is going to be on the basics of instruction, classroom management, and responding to behavior. And it's also going to include videos of students and teachers and situations related to academics and behavior. And as you all know, the research tells us that um, the teachers need the same high level instruction from the actual experts as the administrators. So we're just bringing the experts to, to the teachers so they have the time to spend with them. He is gonna do a follow up later. It's gonna be more localized where he gets to work with actual teams um, and, and kind of go through their plans later in the year in the summer and more as we move into our next school year as well. So we're happy for that. Um, and at this time, I will take any questions that you may have for me. I'll go. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. For the update, very um, informative. And I'm gonna start with the last thing you ended with in reference to the Student Conduct and Discipline Conference. Very excited about that. And I was going to ask, were the teachers going to be brought? And, and, and you answered that um, as well. Um, will Dr. So, so I, I can't remember the calendar offhand, so please. Yes, so these are teacher work days, if my memory yes. serves me so correct. I, okay. I, yes, ma'am, they are. Okay, and then number two, will Dr. Scott give the building administrators things that they can share with um, teachers, especially regarding responses to parents? Um, or will there be some other things to address? Like, I'm just hearing some things and I'm just... So what, what Dr. Scott is going to do, he's going he's gonna to work through the process that we have in our multi-tiered system of support. So he's going to be looking at academics, behavior, and social-emotional wellness, and okay. basically building their skill around how to make the best decision using those three pieces. Um, so when the administrators come on day one, it's going to be the principals and their entire leadership team. So the teams are going to be together and they're going to plan together. They're going to do, do all their learning together and they're going to go away and begin to build their, build their plans. And when he comes back, he's going to kind of work with those teams individually instead of like a whole group of 250 people. Okay. So will they receive, so somewhere in that, in that, all of that, they'll receive some instruction and direction how to work with parents. I know, 
is that that's kind of what I'm asking. Um, so I don't think that that was in the um, the the lineup, but we can definitely have another conversation so I can okay. understand a little more, and then okay. I can we'll do that. We can kind of see where where his plans are. We don't I don't have his complete layout yet, mm -hmm. but um, we can definitely talk, and then I can meet with him and see where he is. Okay, but I'm yeah. excited about this. Thank, right. Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the good presentation, but I understand kind of where Dr. Best is coming from. Sometimes parents can go a different route and the teachers don't have that expertise of guidance, how to deal with the parents. Sometimes it's maybe a little aggressive. So I think that would be a good idea on <clears throat> ways to de-escalate dis um, dis um, de situations with Pam, parents and sometimes family members. I was at one school recently, and the parent was like, I was like, whoa, do we need to call 911? But the the principal and the teacher handled it very professionally. But I think that would be a good idea to just give that training to our teachers if you have a a, a concerned parent, an outright parent, ways to dis, dis, dis escalate those situations. So that's a good point, Dr. And, and this may not be Dr. Scott's um, expertise, but we'll definitely, we'll definitely take that into consideration because yeah. It's always um, important that we partner with parents as best possible to to ensure that um, that uh, they get adequate due pro process and understand. So we have procedures in place that allow for that, but sometimes the conversations don't go very well, especially mm -hmm. when it, when uh, parents want to defend their child, but they also you know may not uh, process what we're what actually took place sometimes. But we can do a better job at it, and I think uh, if, if it's not Dr. Scott's expertise, I believe we can also we can definitely provide some assistance and training for staff to de-escalate uh, concerned situations with parents when we're dealing with disciplinary issues. One more, and this may be, I apologize, this may be a difficult question, but um, in talking with folks in the community, parents and, and teachers, their perception of our data is the opposite of what has actually occurred. So as you alluded to tonight, the um, incidents are actually down, and the amount of in-school suspension, out-school suspension actually increased in some areas, um, but their perception is the opposite, uh, that the incidents are higher and the in-school and out-school suspension is, is lower. Could you maybe speculate on what is the reason for some of that perception uh, that is going on? You know, what, is, what has occurred to, to create that kind of perception in their minds? Well, I think it's um, to answer that, um, it goes back to what I was talking about initially, just in the, the national um, impact from the pandemic. And we've, we have seen an increase in, um, you know, as we've talked about offline with um, physical aggression uh, towards peers and those types of things. Um, so I think that some of that's played into it because, um, uh, you can see it in just in the response um, from the administrators and and what how they are addressing the behaviors. Go back to the slide with the arrows pointing up, if you could. I, I wanted to make make that point here. Two points with with the line with what Mr. Brown is saying. So removals from instruction went up based on a lower number of referrals. So the teachers and the teachers are referring less kids, and we saw systemically that that number is going down. Uh, which was very helpful and, and obviously impact not disproportionality, but when they get to the administrator, there was a more heavier hand appear, it looks like last year, with the referrals that they received. Um, if you go back to 1920, which is the, the, the lesson, we were equipped to put a, quite a few interventions in place, communication with parents, working with the kids, um, detentions, other interventions in lieu of refer removals from instruction. But coming back from the pandemic, the, it, it's kind of like hitting a reset. It looks like when kids came to the office, they, they received a very stern disciplinary consequence that led to um, more of a removal from instruction. We got to renorm. We have to renorm, which goes back to what Dr. Best was mentioning about, you know, speaking with parents and, and de-escalating situations. And then the kids have to renorm also. And I think this training is going to be very helpful because it will help our staff look at alternatives to removals from instruction. And I'd like to see that data continue to move in the right direction. But uh, the only thing that made, that made my day here was that I knew there was a lower number of students being referred. Um, but we still, coming out of the pandemic, not only the kids have, have, have to hit a reset, but also you can see our staff had to hit a reset. Teachers did a phenomenal job of referring less students and, and, and managing situations in the classroom coming out of the pandemic. It was a tough year. 
but uh, we still see a trend of lower lower numbers of re referrals uh, and lower dis um, disproportionality coming out of the pandemic, which I think is phenomenal from uh, for, from our teacher standpoint. And our administrators obviously are trying to set the standard, you know, and you can see that that was held across the board, no matter who, who the kid was, whether whatever their, their um, ethnicity was, or um, they, they held a firm standard with all students that came into the office. <clears throat> So I think there's some work to be done, but I, I do believe there's a, a lot of good news in this data also, but there's still some reality, some work to do um, in looking at our data. If, Any other questions? If I may, I would just like to introduce everyone to Ms. Shayla Wooder, is our new coordinator for the Office of Student Conduct and Discipline. And she has been, a, I mean, just an awesome addition to our team um, so she started with us in August and I know you all haven't had the chance to meet her but she jumped right in and went to work and we're just happy to have her as an addition so you just keep the additions coming <laughs> <laughs> well thank you both all right. thank you yeah, thank you Dr. Ransom all right, I believe we have one last presentation, um, item 5.04, new course proposal for FY2324. Good evening, Chair Searles Law, Vice Chair Dr. Terry Bess, school board members and Dr. Parker. Tonight I will share new course proposals and revisions for your review for the 2023-2024 school year. Each year the Office of Curriculum and Development provides a timeline and application for new course proposals to principals and supervisors to enhance the academic program for students in Newport News. Proposals are submit, were submitted by Woodside High School and Denby High School. The course proposal timeline began on October the 6th and a division committee members consisting of the offices of school leadership, curriculum and development, school counseling, and representatives from the school to include the administrative staff and teachers gathered to discuss new courses. Tonight, we are proposing courses and revisions for your review and seeking approval in December. Upon school board approval, all courses will have access to approved courses unless it is designated as a magnet specific course offering. For the 2023-24 school year, we have two new course proposals, Spanish Literature and Film and AP European History both presented as electives. Two revisions, Dance 4, also referred to as Dance Company and Choreography, and Virginia Teachers for Tomorrow. Spanish Literature and Film would be a World Language Honors elective course. It provides students with opportunities um, to dive deeper into Spanish Literature and Film. It is offered for native Spanish speakers as well as dual immersion students with an opportunity to take an additional elective. This course would be an extension for students currently enrolled in native Spanish one and two and to build capacity for students who may be seeking AP Spanish literature and culture and AP Spanish literature and culture. Learning opportunities would indicate, would include reinforcement of communication skills by analyzing film, interpreting literature, and writing. It is a six theme course that fosters engaging and thought provoking discussions and analytical writing. Career opportunities lend itself to architectural and design, business management, education and teaching, finance, health science, and STEM. Cost for the course um, would include textbooks and resources to um, total about $5,000. This slide highlights the proposed sequence um, for Spanish literature and film, and it is um, placed prior to the AP courses, but it is not required. 
The next course is AP European History. This is a history elective. This course offers students an additional opportunity to explore history by examining political, economic, social, and cultural developments focused in Europe with connections worldwide. Students will analyze text, visual resources, historical evidence, write essays, and make connections to art, music, and theater. The cost proposal for this course would be about $5,500 to support textbooks and resources. No additional staff is needed. When we consider the social studies courses that we already offer in Newport News Public Schools, this would just be an additional offering. Um, even though it's presented at Woodside High School, um, any school would be able to offer European history, AP European history. Dance company and choreography. Um, this is currently um, being offered at Woodside High School, but it has not been given the honors level course credit. It is an upper level magnet course, and it is the only upper level um, course, uh, magnet course that does not receive honors credit. So I think this is just probably one of those courses that over the years um, was overlooked for some reason or another. And finally, Virginia Teachers for Tomorrow. Um, this is also a course revision. It was offered um, years before in Newport News Public Schools, um, and we are proposing to re-offer it by gathering a committee, doing some research, and also um, looking to expand it um, for grades 11 and 12. Basically, Virginia Teachers for Tomorrow fosters student interest, understanding, and appreciation of the teaching profession, and allows secondary students to explore careers in education. Students build a foundation for teaching, learn the history and structure and governance of teaching, and apply teaching techniques in classroom and field experiences. During year two, students also continue to explore related pathways, um, participate in hands-on opportunities, examine careers, observe professional practice, and apply professional standards and educational theory. We are currently um, in communication with the Virginia Peninsula Community College so the students will be able to earn dual um, credit for these courses. Costs associated with this would be textbooks, resources. Because we're partnering with um, the Department of Education in the area of career and in the area of career and technical education, there are minimal costs. Um, in that area, but we will need to purchase resources and materials. And these are the four courses, um, two new courses and two course revisions. For your review, do you have any questions? That's one question. So, so Teachers for Tomorrow, is that kind of like an extension of the old teacher, Teachers of America? Yes. Kind of, okay. Can you um, mention where it would be offered? Any of the high schools Any may offer. High schools. Yes. And would we need additional staff? Normally, we would take a staff member, get, they would get the training, and then that would be one of their elective offerings, uh, whether they teach one or more courses for juniors and, and or seniors. Um, there are a lot of possibilities. Um, I, I, I'm not familiar with, with the previous course in Newport News, but I know in in uh, my former division, we offered scholarships, the school division offered scholarships uh, and, a, and a hiring for graduates coming from those pro courses. So they took one or two students per school and um, they had to apply and, and be interviewed and everything else. Uh, so it's just another pathway. And when they graduated from college, they were just like our let scholars, they, become, they were hired um, upon graduation by, by the school division and they would come back and teach. So we had several teachers in the division who were former graduates of that of those courses. Um, so Dr. Jones is I, I do believe that as we expand the program, more staffing may be needed, just in all honesty, because we do want students to have the field experiences. And sometimes when teachers take it on as an overload or if we're trying to expand our CTE program, we don't want to take from one program to add to another. So as we begin to investigate, staffing may be a consideration. Uh, if you take if you take the social studies teacher and you they was teaching a full load and now they're teaching yes. point six because they're teaching two of these classes, 
someone has to teach those other two classes. That's so exactly that's that's concern. the staffing that's the staffing impact. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see what the response to that particular set of courses. Yeah. Hmm. Any other questions? Thank you so much, Dr. Jones. We are on 5.05, um, the attendance report, 5.06, membership report, 5.07, construction report. Board members, you receive copies of these reports. Are there any questions at this time? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to 5.08. Comments by the superintendent. Okay. If I don't find my comments, it's going to be a very, uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> it's going to be a very short evening. <laughs> All right. For, I would like to first say congratulations um, to, to all of my board members who ran for election and uh, and obviously came out. And I, I say this again. I say, it, I say it publicly. I think the outcome of the election is just a testament to the work that this board has done over the years and um, not only leading our school division through a very difficult time period with the pandemic, but also always keeping the needs of our children first and the needs of our school division uh, in the forefront of our decision making. So um, I, while I am pleased with the outcome, I'm not surprised. So, um, so congratulations to all. Uh, Madam Thank Chair, uh, over the, uh, the youth, I'm gonna start with the Youth Development Department. They presented its third annual More Than a Princess Empowerment Conference on Friday, November 4th and Saturday, November 5th at Woodside High School, which was a very phenomenal event. On opening night, students in grades three through 12 participated in a high school, in a high energy empowerment rally with performances, music, and giveaways. The young ladies also had a chance to network with female champions from across the region. On Saturday, middle and high school students participated in a day of learning and growing featuring workshops on positive self-esteem, leadership, health and wellness, and career exploration. Parents also enjoyed the variety of sessions. Special thanks to the youth development team uh, for coordinating another great empowerment event. And I know some of our uh, ladies on the dice here have participated in some of those events in the past. So you can only imagine how phenomenal this year was for our uh, young ladies who participated in More Than a Princess. On October 27th, the school board chairman and I attended the grand opening of the eSports Lab, part of the, which is part of the Governor's STEM Academy at Heritage High School. The lab provided, provides the school's eSports team with all of the resources they need to successfully compete with other teams from across the country and around the world. The Heritage eSports team competes in several games and has earned a respectable ranking in a, re in a region that includes about 200 schools uh, along the East Coast. Uh, the governor, I think we're ranked as high as three, if I'm correct. The Governor's STEM Academy students have the opportunity to learn about game design and apply those skills in the eSports lab Congratulations to Heritage High School and the eSports team. And I believe, if I'm correct, it was uh, Office, it, formerly Office Depot, but they, they go by a different name now, who was the sponsor of that lab. And we appreciate their partnership in making, uh, making that possible for our students. Congratulations to all our student athletes who competed in the All City uh, Middle School track meet on October 24th at Todd Stadium. Runners representing all of our middle schools competed in seven events. When the scores were tallied, the Booger T. Washington Middle School girls track team and the Gildersleeve Middle School boys track team took top honors. The meet was recorded by students in the telecommunications program and is available for viewing on demand. I'd also like to give a shout out to our high school student athletes for, the, for their great fall seasons. We had a great fall season this year at Newport News. The Minchville and Woodside cross country track teams advanced to the state Class five, to the Class 5 state meet. Um, the Warwick Boys Volleyball Team were the Class 4A regional champions, and the Denby Boys Volleyball Team were the Class 4A regional runner-ups. Both teams advanced to the Class 4 state tournament. The Minchville Girls Volleyball Team were the Class 5B regional runner-ups. They also advanced to, um, to, the state tournament, to the state tournament play. Minchville's golf team was the 5B regional champions and advanced to the Class 5 state tournament. And four football teams made it to the regional playoffs last week, Heritage, Woodside, Minchville, and Ward. All the regional semifinals will be held this week in Class 5 Region B. Minchville will face uh, Maury at Powhatan Field on Friday night. And in Class 4 Region um, A action, Ward will take on Churchland on Friday at Todd Stadium. 
I'd like to remind all families that schools will be closed for students Wednesday through Friday, November 3rd through the 25th. Is that a typo? I thought Wednesday was a half day. I just want to make sure. It is. Wednesday is a half day for staff. Oh, it's half day for staff. So students, Wednesday school is out for you. All right. All right. So Wednesday school is out Wednesday through Friday, November 23rd through 25th. All offices will be on a half day in the next paragraph. All offices will be open on a half day on Wednesday, November 23rd. Please spend some time with your family and friends and relax and rejuvenate. And as always, we wish everyone a safe and happy Thanksgiving. And that concludes my reports for this evening, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you so much. And now we'll go uh, to matters by the school board. And we will start with our student representative, Ms. Manadero. I, I would first like to say I'm really grateful to see like all the strides being made to improve our education. And actually, this um, last month, we were able to have our first stage meeting. I'm really happy to say that I think it started out really well. We're able to connect everyone. Um, even while we're not meeting this month, um, we have a remind group to contact one another in case we need to share any ideas that come up during that time. And um, we, in the future, we hope to implement like a student shadowing day um, so we can be able to go to meet other schools and see what's going on there so we have a better um, first person or like first hand um, experience with how they're doing so okay. thank you thank you uh, Mr. Ely I'm just excited for all the amazing presentations that we heard today I was also able to attend the stand night at Thomas Nelson that was amazing as well as Gildersleeve they hit their homecoming first time i ever seen a high school homecoming and i want to say they came out it was hundreds of kids hundreds of parents and it was just good to see all of that interaction with gilda sleep as well as stay at night so i want to thank our teams for putting that together our school system is a way to lead and to be to set the bar for other divisions so it was really good seeing a middle school have a homecoming, seeing they had like ninety cheerleaders. So just wow. seeing, <laughs> just seeing that forward thinking is um, a sad way into what Mr. Douglas want to do with the middle school sports. Yes, I think Gildersleeve have it already mapped out what they want to do, as well as they had a skating party. I had a chance to um, attend their skating party. I got interviewed. They had news anchors and. I said, what is going on at Gildersleeve? But <laughs> it was good to see our division and see the parents happy and the kids so excited to be a part of things. And I think that's how we build our momentum for high school games and build that attendance up because I attended a game this weekend with Warwick and Hampton, and I could count on one finger how many people was there. So I think we have to, when we started in middle school with the middle school sports and getting them um, excited about being a part. Hopefully, I will transition into high school. So good leadership and new news for us, middle school and high school curriculum, and good things are happening. That's all. So, Mr. Ely, I'm not sure, but I do believe this will be the last time you join us on this day, is it? No, I got one more meeting. You got to be counting me out. I'm a school board member. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to get rid of me already. Not at all. Not at all. We just want to make sure we give you your proper dues. Yes, yes. It's definitely been um, exciting being a part of this board. And it's just not a board. It's a family. I've gained um, relationship with all of my team members and family members and the staff out here, I know y'all going to be sad that I wear y'all 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But it's definitely, um, it's been a pleasure to work with the city of Newport News and look look forward to working with the city council to see how we can get more accomplished, build new schools, give the school systems what we need. Um, for the last six years I've been on the board, it's been constantly a fight. I don't want to fight. I think we're two governing bodies to lead this city, and I don't want no one's um, topic when in middle school for a current event, school board and city council fighting. It should be about school board and city council <laughs> figuring out how to build five new schools within 10 years. So that's the type of, type of work I want to do. I want to, I'm still going to always be a school board member. That's never going to go. That's first at heart. You have so. your camera with that. I was going to say, this is tape. I mean, this is my heart. <laughs> we know, we know. But thank you again, Lisa. I appreciate you. 
I do have one more meeting. Great. We're glad <laughs> we'll put you to work. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Hunter. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Great things are happening in Newport News Public Schools. <laughs> so I do want to say uh, thank you to all those folks out there who went out and just voted. And to my colleagues on the school board, those who ran, uh, we were very successful. And to Dr. Parker's comment, you know, that it's the work that we do. I believe this is why we were reelected again. This is hard work. But as I said before, I look forward to working with the new city council. Uh, um, I think it's going to be a great time for the city. I think those who have been elected um, really have schools um, as their number one, if not number one, they're one and a half or two and a half. Uh, um, Mark, I, I've spoken to all, each and every one of them that have, were successful in their campaigns. And I just look forward to just a positive, um, not just for uh, New Purdue schools, but for the city, that we can come together and there will be great things happening in New Purdue <coughs> City Council, New Purdue schools, new, new businesses, and uh, it's just a whole environment. I think it's time for our city to change uh, our attitudes and stop fighting amongst one another. I really look forward to that. That being said, happy America Education Week and um, have a safe and wonderful, enjoyable um, turkey. Don't eat too much, but have fun and uh, thank you. Thank you. Let's see, let's move to Mr. Brown. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to echo some of the, the same comments. Uh, and say that I'm very grateful uh, to still be a part of this board, Gra uh, grateful to the citizens for entrusting me uh, for another four years to uh, be a part of this family, which we call uh, Newport News. I'm uh, very proud to have raised my own children here in Newport News Public Schools uh, and uh, very excited about what the future holds for all the students and ch children in Newport News Public Schools. I won't turn this into my um, uh, one of my campaign speeches where I list off all the things that I want to try to get done uh, in the next four years. Uh, so I'll, I'll save that for another time and just say that uh, looking very much forward to going to the VSBA annual conference uh, and there uh, I'll be presenting um, as well as I'll be receiving my board of distinction uh, chicken uh, lunch, <laughs> my piece of, my piece of uh, uh, fried chicken lunch. And, I, and I, uh, I say that very proudly because that takes a lot of work and sacrifice in order to get that piece of chicken. <laughs> requires over 84 um, credit hours each year uh, to do that, but that's the commitment that I'm willing to do, and I'm proud to be on a board where uh, we uh, were willing to make the commitment to be a master board. So that's what I'll be presenting on at the BSBA conference. So I'm, I'm very happy to be and, and proud to be a part of a uh, school board and a division where we not only go to the conferences, but we are there presenting at the conferences because we're recognized amongst the state as leaders. Uh, and so I'm, I'm very thankful that the voters saw that as well. Um, congratulations, John. I uh, don't want to uh, you know, let too much time go by. I know you got one, another meeting with us, but I want to say publicly uh, congratulations uh, to you. I uh, knew you were going to do it. I uh, knew you could do it, knew you were going to do it. Um, and that's the only sad part of, of this election um, was that uh, I'm very grateful that, uh, that our team uh, remain together, except for we're very, I'm very sad to be losing you. Uh, you mean a lot to me personally. Uh, uh, I've appreciated uh, getting to know you over the last six years and working with you. Uh, and I know that you have the city's best interest at heart and that uh, this is only going to make our city better. But I really am going to miss you and I've appreciated uh, being able to work with you on a, on a daily basis. So um, you're still going to get the calls from me, you know, <laughs> in, in the middle of uh, you doing hair and, and uh, I'll be ho hollering at you about what, you know, what we need. But it'll always be the same thing, always be something for kids, it'll always be in love. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Harris. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, first, thank you for your leadership. Uh, I would like to congratulate all of my colleagues on their successful uh, rebid uh, for their seats. It's been a, a pleasure working. Uh, with each of you all, uh, we've been through some tough times, and, and one thing I can say is that you all truly, truly, truly are here because you want to do right by the kids. Uh, can't say that about everybody, but I can truly, honestly say that, and we, we've had a lot of debate on that. Uh, John, I'm going to miss you. Uh, I learned a lot from you. Uh, uh, 
I've learned a lot from you. <laughs> uh, and we, we've talked a lot, and you, you, were, you were able to, uh, how can I put it, allow me to see things in a different lens. Um, so I really, really appreciate, you know, what, what you've done uh, for the uh, school board. Uh, Dr. Parker, I want to thank you and your staff, and especially your staff, uh, because this is a strange time that we're living in. Mm-hmm. And, and, and uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of negative energy out there towards schools and, and, and personnel and things of this nature. Uh, you know, we, I hear it all the time. I know Douglas do. Uh, I just want to let you all know, thank you for all the hard work that you put in that people don't know anything about, okay? And I want to say it publicly, uh, uh, you know, because once you, you know, my mother used to say, you know, Marvin, you, you know, your name is everything. And once you, you know, you can't, you got to fight for that for all you, for all you have. And for the school division, uh, you know, that's why we are here to ensure that people do not, um, uh, uh, you know, Make sure they tell the best light on the school division uh, because we see it internally. I just want to thank you all publicly. All right, thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chairman. Thank you so much. And Dr. Best. Yes, good evening, everyone. I'll be brief and quick. Happy American Education Week and to all the parents out there. If you have an opportunity to visit your child's school, please take advantage of that opportunity. This is a really good week to get into the schools. Um, Chair Lady um, Searles Law and myself had an opportunity to attend the More Than Just a Princess um, opening night. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just from the minute you step into the door, the warm reception, the support from all of the young ladies, um, the honorees, their accomplishments at such a young age, absolutely amazing. And in some of their future plans, the uh, people that volunteer to conduct the workshops and work with these young ladies, I just, they're just as excited as the girls are, but they pour into them so much. And I just like to commend uh, Ms. Adams and her staff for just an excellent, you, you have to just actually visit it yourself to really see what, what goes on there. So I had an opportunity to speak at a ninth grade talk, town hall meeting at Warwick High School. And one of the things I shared with the students that I sat in the very auditorium seats that they were sitting in, and I shared with them never in my wildest dreams did I ever imagine that I would be sitting on a school board. And I shared with them that we're discussing constantly rebuilding or remodeling Ward High School. And they were just fascinated um, by that and really had some you know, good questions like who's paying for it and which one are you going to do and <laughs> how long it's going to take. But um, I, I I felt like I made a connection and I wanted them to see that you two can sit here one day, you know, as well. And then finally, I would like to uh, say congratulations to my colleagues that were running for um, office. It's a pleasure to work with you. I've learned so much from you. For John, I told John right to his face, nope, you cannot run and I will not support you. Didn't I, John? I told him straight, no, I was just being very, very selfish. And I had to back up because I didn't want to lose him. Um, John, just over the years, as I've gotten to know him very, very, very well, one of the kindest people you will ever meet. And one of the things I've learned from John is how to be kinder. So, John, I appreciate that, but he's very knowledgeable. He has his pulse on the young people, and they share a lot with him, so I'm really going to miss him. But we're looking forward to working with you on the city council. And Dr. Parker and staff do appreciate all that you do, the work you put in for the report, the detail, the knowledge that you share with us. Um, I'd just like to say thank you. And to everyone, have a great Thanksgiving um, holiday and get some rest. So I'm going to start with happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the break. Um, Rejuvenate. It always seems like that the haul between Thanksgiving to Christmas is double what we put in before that time came. So do, do rest. Um, I'm very honored to be with this board. Um, I very distinctly felt that honor uh, as we waited election results coming in on Tuesday. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed learning from them, growing with them, and it is just an honor to serve. So so thank you to those who um, to who voted to put me here. Um, I think one of the things that I got to do uh, since our last meeting was one that Dr. Parker mentioned, and that was the eSports lab over at Heritage. 
And I just want to comment on that one just because, you know, we're in the business of educating students. Um, and when we talk about that, those are the basics. They really are. But in Newport News, we look at the student as a whole. And the e-lab, sports lab, is just phenomenal. So if you ever get the chance to go visit, to just see um, the excitement of those students doing something that I had no idea was a college opportunity for them to continue. And a story that, we act, that was actually shared with us was that there was a student who was not looking to go to college and was in the eSports arena and now he realizes that he can go to college and do eSports. So we have a new applicant for college <laughs> through the eSports program. And I think that's just wonderful. That's what Newport News Public Schools is about. So you guys have a great evening and enjoy uh, up until Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you for the